Now we come to the interesting relativity stuff. This is called special relativity. This was coined by Einstein, so uh, he was definitely a smart guy, Albert Einstein. There was no uh, exaggeration. I love this uh, meme here, bad puns make me relatively angry. So when uh, Albert Einstein came up with this idea of special relativity, the reason why it's called special is because it applies only to not accelerating reference frames. In other words, things moving at constant speed. So that's going to be one of the postulates, okay? There's two postulates. One of them is um, that the speed of light, in other words, C, the speed of light here, it's constant in all inertial or non-accelerating reference frames. That doesn't sound like much, but that one right there is probably the most mind-blowing thing. What it really means here, first of all, we have to know that this inertial frame means not accelerating. See, general relativity, that's for accelerating frames. And that gets way more complicated. So thankfully, we don't have to go into too much detail for it. Uh, we do that more in the higher level version of the option. Um, and there we still don't do so much of the math. But we do get pretty deep into special relativity. So we're going to do that one. It's considered the easier one. You're going to see it's a little bit mind blowing too. So we're going to see that, um, yeah, the speed of light is constant in all inertial non-accelerating reference frames, which is crazy. What that means is that if you're driving in a car, now imagine this, if I'm driving in a car and I'm going 100 kilometers per hour and you're driving in your car coming towards me at 100 kilometers per hour, like you're also driving 100 kilometers an hour, then if I'm in my car, I'm going to think that you're going towards me at, let's see, 100 plus 100, that'll be 200, right? So in other words, I'm going to see you fly by me, like seems like you're going 200 uh, kilometers per hour rev relative to me. Some people call this the closure speed. Um, but here's the issue. What if I was driving the speed of light uh, in my car and you're driving your car at the speed of light? You might think, oh, well, then you're coming towards me at twice the speed of light, right? No. Our closure speed is still one times the speed of light. And that is what's just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem to. Good news. It doesn't have to. Uh, that's one of the weird things about it. And this is probably the weirdest one. A lot of other scientists are really worrying about it. Uh, Einstein essentially said, stop worrying about it. Let's just say it's constant. Let's move on. So then he just basically did the math of, you know, what happens from there. It's not basic at all. What he did was brilliant, uh, way beyond me. But uh, there we go. So this is the first thing is that speed of light is constant in all inertial or non-accelerating reference frames. Second is a nice easy one that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames, which means if I'm sitting on the ground and I'm going to just, you know, throw a ball up in the air, or you're sitting in a train or a car or something at constant speed, you throw a ball up in the air, there won't be any difference. You know, we can do all the experiments we want physics wise, there won't be any difference. As long as you're not accelerating and I'm sitting still on the ground, no difference. Seems like that's pretty simple, uh, and yet the results are quite amazing. So you can do all the uh, derivations. You can actually do this stuff for time dilation and this Lorentz factor. Um, you can do this with a really nice, long, lengthy uh, thing about, you know, you can have a train. You can have a, uh, you know, light signal going straight up and then back down, bouncing off a mirror. But you can look at that from an observer on the ground, looking at how that will appear to be. And that's one way of showing everything. I'm just going to go and show you the results. So first of all, it's a Lorentz factor. Uh, this is a helpful tool when using relativity, for sure, for sure. We're going to use this. It's called gamma. Gamma, that's the Greek symbol, gamma. I like this. If you're moving at the speed of light, you're going to have no time. That's because uh, time and light, yeah, if you're traveling the speed of light, things are going to get very interesting for you. Good news, we can't really go the speed of light. By the way, this is a meme from South Park. Uh, so if we look at this right here, Lorentz factor, this is just a thing we're going to use a lot. That's just why we're going to use it, okay? It has no units, so it's just going to be this. C is going to be the speed of light, which is, you know, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Um... And we have V, which is a speed with respect to the stationary observer. And the interesting thing is that um, your V can be a multiple of C. In other words, what's commonly done is you would have something like, uh, you know, someone might say, hey, the speed is equal to, um, I don't know, like 0 0.95 C. What that really means is it's 95% the speed of light. This is what we call relativistic. See, it, you have to consider relativity when you're going at speeds that are comparable to the speed of light. That's the idea behind it. So let's look at this Lorentz factor here, what happens. If you look within this right here, this is your speed that you're traveling, and this is the speed of light. So imagine then if you're traveling at zero speed, what if this is zero? Zero divided by C is still zero. One minus zero is still one. Square root of one is one. So one over one, that's one. That's why this graph actually starts off right here. So at V equals zero, 
uh, gamma is 1. But what's going to happen is the other extreme is that what happens if you get to the speed of light, c. Let's make this c here, just imagine that in your head. c squared over c squared, that's 1, isn't it? 1 minus 1 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, 1 over 0 is, uh-oh, error, it's undefined. So that means this thing right here is asymptotic. That's why you don't have to memorize this graph, but it helps to sort of know what it does. That means it'll be something that'll curve and it'll go sort of up to infinity here, so it won't ever reach it. So that's how this works. So as V approaches C, see that? As you get close to C, then uh, gamma approaches infinity. Let's look at this. There's some things called the Lorentz transformations. So these are these transformations on how to go from one reference frame to another. So if we have a clock in reference frame S, uh, that would be a stationary frame of reference. And we have a clock that's in the moving frame S primed, and we can have them synchronized. We can have you know, the two clocks line up exactly at some point. T equals zero. Well, if you're in those frames, you're going to both agree on how you measure y and z, but you're not going to agree on the position or time. So this shows you how you can go from one thing to the other. So this is how you can compare uh, position in the new frame compared to your position in your original frame or your stationary frame and your speed and this gamma. This is, again, if it's relativistic, if you're going, you know, some considerable fraction of the speed of light. Don't you notice this looks just like the Galilean transformations, just without the gamma? So there you go. Uh, and these are actually pretty easy to use. You just think, okay, position, that's going to be in meters. Lorentz factor has no units. This is position in stationary frame. Speed of your moving frame, that's going to be in meters per second. Time is going to be in seconds. And time is still going to be in seconds. Weirdly enough, time isn't exactly the same. This implies that time is relative. That's kind of weird, isn't it? So what is stationary and what's moving, it depends completely on the observer. Right? It all depends on who's watching. That's how why we're always going to say speed's relative to someone or measured by someone. So you can be in the train, like this uh, example I showed you in the last video, um, with that video that I showed you from Top Secret, for example. You can be in the train, and you'll think that you're the stationary one. It's like the background is moving. So that's sort of how it works. We have a final one right here. This is velocity transformation. This one doesn't need gamma. Uh, so this right here, this is kind of weird, but basically you've got different frames uh, of reference here. You've got um, the speed of a moving frame with respect to a stationary frame. Okay, so you have frame S and you have sort of frame S prime sort of moving along here. And someone who's an S prime, that's, that speed is going to be V. Now, what's interesting, that that's compared to S. So S is going to think that this guy is moving at V. However... You might have an object, some other object. Maybe you have something else that's moving. For example, like, you know, this way. Maybe this right here, that could be called U. In other words, this object right here uh, in stationary frame S might see some object U that's flying towards it that way. And then you might think, well, what's this U primed? That's that if you're sitting here in S, this is a little bit mind-blowing. We'll do an example with it to make it more straightforward, hopefully. So this is you. Let's say this is the person here that we're considering here. This is the important thing. You are sitting in this spaceship, let's say, going this way. So the question might be asking, like, how fast is that spaceship going if you measure it? In other words, if you're in this spaceship, how fast will you think that spaceship is going? That's going to be you primed. That's going to be you are measuring in the, um, I shouldn't say you because that implies it's this letter. So the observer is sitting in S primed. And this observer is going to measure the speed of this object, U. So this, what, you, what this person right here will measure, that'll be called U primed. See the difference? See, this U, that speed, that's as measured by a stationary observer. They think it's going speed U. And maybe, let's do a, a practical example. I like this, obey gravity, it's the law. I actually have that on a t-shirt. That's from Think Geek. At least that's where I bought it years ago. So let's do an example here. We have spaceships A and B, and they approach each other at 0.7c as measured by an observer on Earth. And right away, before anything else, maybe it'll help to actually do a diagram. So here's Earth. So the observer is sitting on Earth right here. This is what they see. Right? So they're going to see uh, two spaceships. Maybe I'll draw a spaceship here. So this is a spaceship here. I'm not very good at drawing, clearly. So this is this person right here, and we're going to have another spaceship right here coming towards. Let's just say like this. So let's consider which ones are this. So this is A and B. Let's call this, this could be B, I guess. So this could be A. This could be the ship. So this is the person on Earth. They think that this speed right here is going to be 0.7 C. 
And they think that this person is also going to be going 0.7c. But the way I've drawn it, I need to have one of them be negative. I usually like to say right is positive and left is negative, just like we do on graphs. So in this case then, because see, look, we're looking, if you are in ship B, this is the important thing. This is, this is, the, this is what we're considering here. You're in ship B, how fast is A moving relative to you? In other words, how fast will you think spaceship A is coming towards you? Obviously, we know this speed, right? On Earth, they see you in, um, I shouldn't say the word you. On Earth, they see this spaceship B, which is where you're sitting, uh, is going at 0.7 C compared to the Earth. That's measured by the Earth, but so is A. So let's look carefully at the letters here and how we should define them. So do you notice we have this one right here? Maybe I'll just copy and paste this, actually. Maybe that's going to be a good idea. See if this will help. Although this will probably be huge now. Let's see what I've done here. Yeah, that'll be okay. So let's use this then. That's always nicer to compare them. So let's say I've got them, uh, I'll draw it like this in different letters maybe. There we go. So I should call this a V because V is the speed of the moving frame, right? That's, that's, that's the observer sitting in the moving frame. So I'll call that V. And then the velocity of the object as measured in S in the stationary frame. Oh, so that's going to be U. But I have to make one of them negative. I'm going to make V negative because that one's going to the left. So maybe that makes more sense. And by that, I hope it makes sense now. We need to actually find U primed. We need to find the velocity of the object, in this case, spaceship A, as measured in the moving frame S primed, which is me, the observer here. Maybe I can call this. So here is S. This is going to be S primed. Uh, wait, I should be careful. That is not S. This one right here is not S. But this is S primed. Because frame S, that's Earth. So you are sitting in frame S primed here. This is what you will measure. So let's actually do the math now. You'll see it's not so bad at all once we have it all figured out here. So let's do it. We've got U primed is going to be U minus V. In this case right here, well, you should always write this down right on your exam. This shows you the examiner. You know what you're doing. So let's actually try to do this here. So U, U is 0.7C. Minus V, but you got to watch out, it's minus minus V. So actually it's going to be plus 0.7C. All that over 1 minus 0.7C times a minus 0.7C. All that over C. Now what happens here is this. We have U prime then equals, let's see, 0.7C plus 0.7C. That's 1.4C. We have that divided by 1 minus, and we have uh, 0 0.49. Won't that be? Because it's 0.7 times 0.7. Ah, but it's a plus, isn't it? So let's just do that with our trusty calculator. Just uh, let me just do this here. So I have 1.49 and I have 1.4 divided by that. I end up with a speed of, let's just see here, have I done this right? Uh, yeah, so this one here is going to be, um, so I've done 1.4c divided by 1.49. When I divided those two, I ended up with an answer of 0 0.9, let's say 4 C. So this is what's gonna happen here. This is the answer. So what this means is that although you're both coming towards each other, you know, at 0.7 C, your closure speed is not 0.7 plus 0.7. See, this is a little bit weird, isn't it? You would think it should be 1.4. You'd think that, you know, if you're going 0.7c and the other spaceship's going 0.7c towards you, you'd think that the closure speed should be 0.7 plus 0.7, which is 1.4. But nothing can go faster than the speed of light. So that's what you notice what happens here. If you do the transformation, you'll end up with 0.94c. See, you haven't gone faster than the speed of light, so everything's okay. So that means you're going to approach each other. You're going to think that spaceship A is coming towards you at 94% the speed of light, but not greater. Turns out that's how this works. It's pretty amazing, isn't it?